Welcome to Documentary First, inside look at a first-time filmmaker's journey. I am your host, Josh Lindsay from the Movie Proposal Podcast. And with us is our first-time filmmaker, Christian Taylor. Hey, Josh Lindsay. Hi, Christian. And we've got a, a crowd today. It's not just button-pushing guy, Jason Rugg. Hello, Jason. Hey there. But Hi, it's Jason. also editor, Bill Ebel. Hello, Bill. Hey, guys. And composer Jeff Kurtnacker. Hello, Jeff. Hey, everybody. So uh, we just, this get, this podcast keeps growing. Uh, we're going <laughs> to not just in, learn new things, but we're going to have new people learning these new things from each other. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But before we jump into the, the heart of the podcast, Christian. Yes. What is an update you can give us on the film right now? Well, we're at a really exciting place. Uh, pretty much we are ready to pass the film off to the colorist, Rodney Williams. We still want to get a couple of more images uploaded um, and upgrade those images, but we hope that he'll start working on that on Monday. Um, and then while he's working on the color part of it, which will take about a week, um, we're finishing up some sound um, mix things and hopefully in about a week and a half to two weeks the girl who wore freedom will be done whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> last time we talked it was all doom and gloom <laughs> archivist that that would never be able to find all these these pieces of archival footage what happened there so we were able to find several important items and some of them came from Denis Vandenbrink and uh, some of our helpful people in Normandy. Michelle Coupe was able to help us upgrade some of our cast member photos using her own scanner and there is still one video we have not been able to upgrade so we cut that out of the film. Sadly, I really hated to do that. Um, so there are still some images that need to be upgraded, but for the most part, the worst offenders have been solved. And we just decided we were going to have to make an executive decision to just move forward, even though all of them aren't completely resolved. So we will probably have to go back to our colorist at some point to have him color the new upgraded photos when they come in but we're just going to live with the version that we have now. And once it's done in two weeks, that'll be it until at some point we sell it or license it. And they ask us to re-edit it for whatever reason. Um, right. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be done. It's super exciting. I don't know what my life will be like when I don't <laughs> have this to focus on every day. <laughs> That is very exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to that as I'm sure as everyone else. Uh, um, one other quick thing we got a, we got accepted into the trailer film festival. Did I tell you that? No. Yeah. That's incredible. What's the, you say the trailer film, the festival? trailer film festival. Yes. So we didn't get into AFI. We talked about that last week. Uh, that was so sad. We still have not heard back from the Sheffield documentary film festival. And, but we got into the trailer film festival. We submitted our two minute, 30 second trailer to this tiny little film festival. And it begins, we were, uh, like there were many, many trailers that were submitted. It's now down, I think, to 100. So we made it into that finalist list. And those trailers will be screened for industry uh, executives uh, on May 28th. They'll get two months to look at them. Um, so through the end of July. And then the executives then will reach out to the creatives and say, we're really interested in your project. We want to see more. Um, and that would hopefully be the start of some sort of distribution discussion. So that's awesome. Yeah. We're Great excited news. about that. See the, the adventures of filmmaking. Last time we talked, it was down the dumps. Today we are excited. Right yeah. now. So. Bill and I talk about that all the time. It's the creative process relived over and over again today. Everything's fantastic. And then tomorrow it'll be terrible. So, right. I, I want you to understand uh, the world of sales is not that much different. Really? <laughs> <laughs> One day is very different from the next in terms of enthusiasm and excitement. And then, you know, on a dime, it can be doom and gloom. And yeah. You have to learn to, you know, mitigate that, you know, your emotions. So yeah. That's true. Yep. But, My okay, father. Well, hey. 
sorry, my father always says things are never as bad as they seem or right. as good as they seem. That's good advice. That's yeah. good advice. All right, go ahead. Um, all right. Well, I, I've been talking too much. I, I really would like to opt to have someone else uh, take over the reign so I can take a break right now. Um, <laughs> do you think maybe Jeff, the composer, Jeff, would you mind taking my job over today? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That'd be great. Well, yeah, let me explain be- how we got here and why, how Jeff is here. This all happened, this setup with Jeff and Bill being here, because after the last podcast, Jeff and Bill and I had a meeting and they had just watched each other's podcasts. And Jeff said, Bill, I just had to ask all of these questions because you told me so much, but there's so much more I want to know. And that's the nature of being a virtual film company. We're never together. So we only know a little window. Um, and so I said, well, let's do another podcast where Bill and Jeff can ask each other questions. So that's how we ended up here. Awesome. Yeah. Right, so, hey, um, take it over, Jeff. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I find um, the whole filmmaking process uh, fascinating and it's been cool to listen to Christian give his perspective throughout this podcast. Um, and so I love listening to you guys and Bill talk about the editing process. But one thing, and Bill and I have talked a little bit about this, but I kind of think it's really important if he wouldn't mind sharing, um, is the process of editing when really the – most people notice when it's bad, but not a whole lot of people notice when it's done well. It's, it's sort of a transparent thing, and that's really what you want, right? <laughs> Bill's goal is to do it so – is to edit so that uh, – it feels seamless and it you feel like you're you're being carried through this narrative uh, you don't notice any choppiness but that usually means you don't notice that how good the editing is and so bill i'm wondering how you how you deal with that how do you raise your own game when you probably aren't getting a whole lot of feedback as to what is going well or what's going right yeah i mean that you know on that happens a lot. And I, I was actually just uh, talking to Christian about this the other day, how we tend to, when we get something, you know, in the creative process, we go through and here's all the things wrong with it. But we, we skip by all the things that are right or great because we're trying to get, you know, to the thing that needs to be fixed or whatever. So I always try to remind myself to like, if I'm making notes on your score to first say, this is fantastic. There's, you know, there's all this stuff that I love, but you know, what you're going to hear from me is all the things that are, you know, that I want to tweak or, you know, are affecting me or whatever. Um, but with editing, I mean, there's a, a, I can't remember where this is from. It's probably somebody much, you know, smarter than I am a book or something, but um, they call editing the invisible art. And so when it's done well, you don't notice and, you know, you don't see those cuts. It just happens you know, organically and your brain just kind of, you know, moves with the story. Um, so, uh, you know, unless you're trying to jar somebody with an edit, you, you hope they don't notice. Um, and so a lot of times that's how you can tell if an edit's off is if it's landing somewhere, um, where it's cut, you know, it's calling attention to it, you know? And so like, we actually, we talked about this the other day when I look, I was, going through the mix and you're, we had the new score in that you had done and there was a piano uh, piece that started exactly on a cut. And I said to you, Oh man, I need to shift that, shift that cut over a little bit because, because you hit the piano and my cut happens, your eye, you know, notices it right away. So, um, so, so do anyway. you think that's like a, a personal a personal taste. So you are looking at your edit and you're looking at the things you've done well and you're going really, no one's probably giving you feedback on how well something is working, but you look at it and go, I know I can make that better. What, what do you think that is? Is that, is that a, just years in the field of editing or is that a personal taste that some editors might be like, Oh no, it's fine. But you're saying I really prefer it this way. Uh, it's both, I would say, because obviously with the years of experience, you develop that skill and, you know, you um, hopefully have, uh, you know, worked with other editors and other people who are better than you and you've watched them or you're watching films and seeing great editing done. Um, so, you, you know, you kind of develop a taste for, you know, something that's good, you know, good taste. Um, but, uh, but, you know, some of it is 
subjective. Um, you know, and there, you know, there are times with clients where they're like, oh, you know, I, I don't like this or I don't like that. And it's something that I love personally, like, you know, especially in on like on the commercial side, um, you'll get people who don't like cutouts, you know, at the end of a spot. But if it's done well, it's like a great punctuation moment at the end. Um, but I'll get, hey, can we get a fade to black there? And you're like, all right, <laughs> you're killing what I'm trying to do there, but you know, it's your baby. So do you try to push for an education as to why you think that's a better choice or do you yeah. just say, Oh, if that's what you want. That's fine. It depends on the client. You know, if it's uh, somebody that I'm uh, have a good relationship with, I'll do that. If it's, you know, somebody that's brand new, you know, I, I tend to serve the client first and get start, you know, build that relationship so that you can start, pushing your agenda a little bit sometimes. Um, uh, but it, you know, at the end of the day, it is, there's a lot of subjectivity to it. And, uh, you know, as the editor, it's almost never your project. Um, so you can push for what you think is best, but at the end of the day, you, you know, submit to whoever's, the you know, piece it is. So. Yeah. I, I just think that's fascinating that the, how personal growth occurs in an art form where you're not getting a whole lot of feedback to when you're doing something right. You're mainly to getting feedback when you're doing something wrong. And I think it's really tough to sort of achieve, like I said, personal growth in that area because you're all, you're constantly getting, you know, the negative stuff. Um, and you just have to understand that um, you're not hearing about all the good stuff. And so it's mentally right. it's just a different game. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm sure you get that a lot with what you do because you know, like I said, we, you know, me and Christian, as we've talked about it, we've had to remind ourselves to tell you about all the stuff we love because we tend to like laser focus in on, Hey, this, you know, transition's not working for me or whatever. And we'd hit you with all the negative and don't, you know, really. Yeah. Well, you also know that I'm super insecure. So you treat me very <laughs> kid gloves, right? And you kind of just, hey, buddy. <laughs> well, what I do think is interesting is that, um, Bill is, I love working with him because A, he is very respectful of his place and he understands the client editor relationship very, very well and at a super high level. You know, he trained in Chicago and he had some really great mentors and he was, you know, honed by fire, honestly. And so he really respects that place. Um, and he doesn't often, unless invited, come and say, I would do this differently. But when you do invite him into that creative process, and I've seen this often, his ideas are fantastic. He just needs an, an avenue with which to express them in a safe place with which to communicate. So I have given him that freedom. But there are times, too, within when he would say, no, I don't like that. And I would have to say, I just want you to try this for me. <laughs> and he would. And then he'd be like, okay, you're right. I like it better. But that, that, that wasn't that often. But the thing is, he listened and he would adjust. And so there's a great sense of humility as well as expertise. I love working with Bill for that. I think that's awesome. Um, specifically on this documentary, one thing that really struck me is the amount of archival, you know, we we're just talking about how the new pictures you, you got and the archival footage and sometimes it's still pictures and sometimes it is uh, actual, you know, film footage. Yeah. Uh, but how did you guys decide maybe, you know, to both you and Christian, how do you decide when to, when that really helps uh, the story and when maybe it's too much or isn't really serving a purpose? How do you know when to put that in? Um, you know, again, it's very subjective. Um, but for me, if somebody's talking about something that, you know, is like past memory or something that they're, you know, they're talking about and, and we find an image or, uh, uh, you know, video of, of that thing happening, it's, it's really easy to drop that in because you want to hear the person telling the story, but to give, uh, the viewer, a visual of here's a little boy, you know, with a GI as he's talking about how much he loved, you know, being a, uh, being with the GIs and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, sometimes it's just finding a great image or a great video where 
the the image itself tells a story and me and Christian have been like, this has got to get in there somewhere. We've got to find a place for this to work because um, yeah. And that's a lot of times too, how we decide on good images because we've actually had a ton of archival pictures, especially thrown at us recently and we're combing through them and you think, Oh, there's gotta be something in here. But there's a big difference between a still photo that tells a story just by itself and one that's just documenting, you know, something that happened. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's, 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 it was, a especially at the beginning, we were just trying to find things that worked because we were trying to get something together. But as we moved on, we, you know, kind of refined that. I could, you know, there was a, there was a, um, Christian talked about this on, on a previous podcast about this term killing your babies and, and yeah. having, you know, it's such a, a crazy uh, turn of phrase. But, <laughs> yeah. um, so, but what's that like with you guys in the room? You know, Christian, again, she, she talked about it a little bit, but I, I'm really curious as to um, when you guys are trying to get the film down to a certain time, you're trying to trim the fat, um, but there's parts of it you really love. Maybe there's an archival picture of footage you really love. How do you, how do you distill it down to this essence of what you're trying to say and kind of get emotions out of the way when, what it's, when you're doing what you're doing? Yeah. Well, time is definitely a part of that, you know, and, and, you know, we always say editing is a process because when you're done with the first cut, you know, there's a lot in there that needs to come out, but you just don't know it yet. Um, so to be honest, most of the babies were Christians because she knew all the stories and she knew the people intimately. And uh, so there was a lot of backstory in her mind with those different pieces. And it's the nice thing about an editor not being involved in the shoot and not being involved in that part of the process because you have a more uh, objective view of, hey, we don't need this story or this you know, is dragging or whatever. But to be honest, towards the end, <clears throat> it was mostly Christian coming back to me and saying, hey, I think we need to lose this. And she didn't ever say it with a happy <laughs> tone because she, it was reluctant, but she knew at that point it served the story to take this piece out or to, you know, shorten this piece up. And, and then I would, you know, I would cut it as kind of brutally as I could and see, you know, what we got to, and we could always add stuff back in, but. Um, so that was kind of the process you would, you would sort of strip it, strip it down and then see if anything was missing. And yeah, see if the felt. story still worked, see, if, especially for a lot of these stories, does the emotion still carry, you know, so that uh, it's not just do the details, are they still being told, but does the heart of the story still work? Um, and, and that's hard because you have to kind of unremember all the stuff that you know that's gone. Right. Um, but, you know, it's, again, it's another skill that you develop as you have done it you know, multiple times to go, okay, I have to, and sometimes it really does. It takes a weekend to get away from it and be able to look at it with fresh eyes. And, you know, we always laugh about it. Most of our best ideas are like in the shower, in the shower. Or laying in bed in the morning going, Hey, what if I try that? Yeah. Um, so it's, it really just takes time. It's, you know, impossible to do it right the first time. And we fortunately had an entire year and a half, year and a half working on editing this. So over the course of that time, you begin to deal with the reality that you have to take things out. And fortunately, the screening the heck out of the rough cut helped us do that. We saw the things that really worked with an audience and things that didn't. And that and, and we knew the time limits that we were up against. And so we would make the cuts one at a time and see how that worked. So Yeah, and sometimes it was a distributor telling Christian, this has got to be under 90 minutes. And then you're like, okay, we got to lose 10 more minutes. You know, so, um, you know, it wasn't always from us saying, hey, this would be better if we cut 10 minutes. It, sometimes it's outside, you know, forces. Yep. All right. Well, hey, I uh, I just want to say um, I can read the writing on the wall. I'm I'm basically out of a job now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I won't be needed for any more of these podcasts. Thank you very much. Um, no, when, I you're, really when you're sick, we'll, we'll ask him to be the stand in. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I see where this is leading meetings without me. We'll I just have this guest host on. No. I, 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 I've been here before Christian. I get that. <laughs> no, Josh, we love you. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Hey, uh, great job, Jeff, Bill. Thank you very much. We're going to come back and have Jeff and Bill on again. Are we not? Yeah, we're going to do that for next week. We got some special stuff planned, uh, but you know, yeah, I can't wait. Well, I can't wait to find out if I'm going to be there. But in the meantime, (laughs) thanks everyone for listening to Documentary First, where we believe everyone has a story to tell and you can be the one to tell it. Bye, everybody.